Well, here is my latest task. Customer has brought me this. In fact, he had it to trailer it over here. It won't start. Does not run, doesn't want to play the game. Apparently, at some point, they did have the carburetors rebuilt. Um, but he did tell me that when he took off one of the uh, dashpot tops, the needle stayed in the carburetor. So <clears throat> that'll be the first thing I want to do is take the carburetors and have a look and make sure they're OK, make sure the fuel level's set OK or the float level, make sure that's OK. <coughs> then once I'm sure and I'm happy about that and we're getting good fuel delivery, then I'm going to do what I call my litmus test, and that is to spray brake cleaner through the intake and try and start it. That'll do two things for me. One, if there's a spark, the car should start, or at least attempt to start. Two, if it doesn't make any attempt to start, then I gotta know that I'm not getting the spark. So that's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. Um, I must admit, I have noticed that the wiring on this car is um, somewhat suspect, to say the least. And when I do return this to the customer, I will suggest to him that he replaces all the wiring harnesses. It's a nightmare of a job, um, but it's something that has to be done. And I know I harp on it about this and all of my, most of my videos, but it's, it's essential if you don't want to lose your classic car to a fire. Because believe me, these things go up once they go up, they are terrible. And if it happens when you're driving, unfortunately due to bitter experience, I can tell you that smoke is choking. I had a horn wire short out on me and on a Cortina that I had and that was all that shorted was just that that one wire because some idiot had run a wire through a metal firewall and had not put a grommet in it. So consequently when it shorted, which it does after vibration, uh, it burnt from the horn right the way up the steering column inside the car, filled it full of acrid smoke. Not something you want to experience, believe me, it is uh, pretty disgusting. Right, let's uh, get these carburetors apart and get on with the job. Right, before I get into <clears throat> diving right into the carbs, let's just do a couple of real basic checks. These dashpots should be full of oil. That's as dry as a bone. There's nothing in there. Let's try this one. Exactly the same. That doesn't help it's running. Now, that won't stop it from starting, but that doesn't help it's running. Now, let's just have a quick look at uh, uh, this damper and see what we've got going on here. How many of these things are? Biddly diddly. Oh dear, there's a washer on that one. Oh, there's a washer on that one. Okay. Oh my god, what the hell? There is a bunch of wires here. Bare wires near a fuel system is not a good idea. I haven't got a clue. Well, no, I do have a clue. They should probably go to the starting carburetor, which is broken. That's not helpful. Do note, wing protector. You should always do this when you're working on someone's car. Even if the paintwork isn't good, you don't really want to be scratching or adding scratches. And the paintwork on this vehicle is, is reasonably good, so I'm trying to be careful with it. Okay. Now let's see what happens when we pull this off. Okay. And I will get myself a little... Uh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at this. Oh, that was tough. Ooh, there is some oil in it because it just poured out. Just not very much. And someone wrote on this an R. Uh, not quite sure what that's meant to mean, but um, if they put R for right as you're standing where I am 
Or should that be R for rear carburetor? Who knows? Okay, let's uh, have a look. I'm not sure about the needle position. I'm going to take it out and reset it because uh, I want to make sure I know that it's correct. Okay, the jet's quite a fair way down, but until I get it apart and uh, look at it properly, I won't be able to tell whether that's correct or not. I think, I think it's like two and a half turns, something like that. Let me get a uh, tray to put this in. The front carburetor and we'll put that to one side. Let's have a look at the rear for a laugh shall we? Be interesting to see what that one has written on it. Yes and these are always fun but my god look at the state of this wiring. Now I grant you that's a ground wire but, oh dear, oh, what the heck's this thing? Sheesh. <coughs> I'm afraid this one uh, certainly needs some TLC. I'm trying to do this blind, and that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> Get this one out. Oh, well it looks like the uh, temperature sensor's off. There's no wire on that. Now the otter switch that sends the signal to the starting car. I believe that's correct. Hmm. Can't I get it in the hole? Because there's no hair around it. Put some hair around it, bingo, I'm in the hole. Okay, let's have a laugh now. Okay. in there but nothing too terrible spring looks relatively new oh look this one's got an F on it for front so already these are in the wrong place now does it make a difference it can do because they've bedded in over the years so this one with the F on it obviously should be in the front carburetor and that one with a R should be on the rear carburetor. Dear oh dear. All right, and I am going to swap them around and put them back where they should be. So of course, I'm assuming that the person that marked them did it correct in the first place, but uh, that you never know, do you? Sometimes you have to take things on trust. What's wrong with this one? Oh my god, that pin is weighing. Sorry, not pin, needle. All right, so that's certainly something I want to do. I'm going to put that in there and leave it there. They're, they're safe there until I can uh, get these carbs off. So give me a second here. I need to get myself another tray. And this is for the rear carburetor. And the rear admiral. <laughs> I bum-bound it. <laughs> 
All right, that is for the rear carburetor. Yeesh. Now, what should we attempt next? Well, I think we have to... Uh, and I've got to set that and set that. Do I want to take the carburetors all the way off first or not? I don't think so, but I am going to get this out of the way. Purely because it's in the way. Um, and then, I guess I could work around it. I want to get the, uh, the settings at a base point so that I know where I'm starting from. Which means disconnecting the throttle linkage there to make sure the butterflies are shut. This will show you this. This needle has been set in there so deeply it's it's totally wrong. All you need to do is get your screwdriver in here, <coughs> loosen this, pull the needle out. Oh my gosh, that was so far out. This, there's a shoulder on the needle there that you can see. Now that must be level with the bottom. So a good way is to do it with your fingernail. Oops, he says. Now I'm looking at it and I'm getting the light reflecting across it and that's holding it in the right position now. Just do it up with my screwdriver, pinch it up, and we're good. Absolutely perfect. So... Now that can go back in. Uh, as you can see, I still haven't got the uh, <laughs> air intake off. I'll do that now, I promise. Okay, so I've now got that uh, air intake out of the way. I'm grabbing my trusty King Dick. Uh, it is a 7 16 Whitworth. That way I can undo the, uh, uh, the large float chamber nuts and uh, get the get the fuel line off. Uh, don't lose all the washers. There are washers galore on these and also a filter inside. Now I'm getting a lot of fuel coming out of this one which is rather disconcerting so yeah don't lose your washers. Okay and there should be one there too and maybe it's caught in there. Yep there it is. Okay, and then I'm the same over here. Okay, grabbing the washer. And the other washer. The other washer. Come on. Okay. And then pulling. Oh, I don't believe it. There should be filters inside these. The filters are missing. Oh my god. Let's get this float chamber top off. Really? Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. is it's probably he says clutching at straws probably a half inch let's have a look uh, see if my memory serves we well if your memory serves you well you're wrong it's not a half an inch <laughs> okay guys don't leave the room yet this could get exciting But I doubt it. Oh, you did. You picked up the same socket again. Jeez, come on. Come on. Oh, oh, 
and then I jump from half an inch to what? Nine sixteenths, that's not right. Hang on. Half an inch. I should then go to something different. <laughs> Let's see. In this room. It's a nine sixteenths. Hmm. What should that be? I seem to be missing a thumb. Let me see what I can find. Crap a doo do. Hmm. Well, oh, maybe I can find something on the, the metric side that is a good fit. Ah, trouble is, a lot of these were Whitworth, and I don't have many Whitworths. So if I got there, uh, close but no cigar. Well, actually, yeah, what is that one? It's a 13 millimeter. I wonder if the next one up is too big. Certainly looks way too big to me. <sighs> so it looks like it's going to have to be the 13. Uh, let me do it in a hex rather than a 12 point. And that's a good snug fit then. At least it should be. Trouble is these nuts have been burred. Okay, that's got that one loose. What about this one? Yeah, they're so burred. Oh, it's a shame. I'll get this one out. Let's start with what I can get and then I'll have to work on that one to, uh, to get it out or clean up those surfaces. Okay, and don't lose that special little washer. And that should have a washer on the top and it doesn't. Oh dear. Okay, let's have a look inside the float here. Um, why is the float? <laughs> There's no fuel in the float bowl. Dear, oh dear. I bet that wasn't set right. See, I want to get that out because I want to uh, see what kind of condition that float bowl's in. Oh boy. This could be a little tricky. <laughs> Oop, there we go. Oh, there is some fuel in the bottom. Sure as hell ain't a lot. I mean, this was sitting deep inside it. Oh dear, that doesn't look so good there. I'm going to have to test these and see if they float. I've got a strange feeling this one probably doesn't float. But we will see. We won't condemn it just yet. What I've got to do is find a wrench to fit that. Maybe uh, I'm going to have to cheat and do something I hate, which is use an adjustable. Don't like using these, but needs must when the devil drives. it wasn't ridiculously tight which I guess is a blessing see now that one's got the washer on it does it have 
the special washer underneath. Yes, it does, but oh my god, that's never been replaced. Oh, Jesus. set these properly oh, can I <laughs> and this float bowl is full to the brim almost uh, so I've got a feeling that they're that's certainly going to be a problem for running and starting I don't know if I can get this one out <laughs> uh, it doesn't want to play nice I do want to get it out. Well, I've got to look on the bright side, it's floating. this out I gotta gotta get it out I want to check on it I also want to check on any crap that's in the bottom of the float bowl here and because, <laughs> because it's not uh, steel I can't use a magnet to pull it out so I have to kind of try and get it out with one of my little spiky things here that I'm doing and it's not easy it keeps you amused whilst you watch me struggle. Even though you can't even see what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, so close. Oh, almost done it then. Get it near the top, and I just can't get the bar underneath it to pull it out. And what I don't like is it drops right in. So it may be that this float is actually sinking. Not fully, but somewhat. I'm going to continue to do that off camera because there's no point in you watching the back of my head. Um, let me get that float out and then we'll carry on. Well, as I suspected, this float bowl leaks. I don't know if you can hear this. Look at that. That's fuel inside the float. So uh, that's got to be replaced. I'm not so happy about this one either so I'm going to tell the customer we need to at least replace the two float bowls the two floats uh, it's not worth trying to fuck around with these things just get new ones get replacements so uh, I can't go much further on this I'm going to speak to him and see whether or not he wants to just buy two complete rebuild kits or how he wants to play this. Yeah, so I got one that's got no fuel in it and I got the other one that is over fueling because the float doesn't float. And that's just the start on the carburetors. We'll see uh, how it goes from here. Um, let the customer make his mind up about what he wants to do. Um, my suggestion to him will be to buy two complete new rebuild kits. So at least we know we're starting from ground zero rather than someone else's screw ups. Okay, uh, I'm gonna end this video here. We are going to come back to this and uh, it may well be rebuilding the carburetors, but obviously that's not gonna be for some time. But I will push this video out. Um, 
But let me just uh, take you for a walk a second here. <clears throat> just so you know what I'm working on. Now, excuse me a second. This is the car I'm working on. It is a 1965 S-Type Jaguar. It has faults. There's no two ways about that. But it is still a pretty decent car. The bodywork's not bad. It's been resprayed. Not in the best way, but it's it's been resprayed and it, it looks it looks decent. Um, the interior has been redone. The leather is is new and and absolutely beautiful. The dash, I'm not sure what they've done to that. In all honesty, I think they may have made that out of aluminium uh, and made it look as if it's wood. It's really rather strange. I've never seen a dash like that before. However doesn't matter it, it's 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 nice you know like this leather top that that should be wood um, and these I don't think that's normal I don't ever recall seeing those kind of wooden strips on an s-type I could be wrong but I don't think I am um, they haven't got the seat belts in at the moment but obviously that's going to be fitted and what they have done to the wood that is there is, is pretty decent I must admit it looks pretty good um, in the back there are some rather strange looking speakers but hey each to their own oh, one thing and and this I guess you Americans you might find this um, amusing or funny um, of course I've been living in America now for 20 years and so I jumped in the driver's side to to release the bonnet hmm couldn't find it well of course I couldn't it's here it's an English car they didn't move the bonnet release. They still left it on what would be the driver's side in England. <laughs> and door panels, excellent. I mean, they're, they're absolutely beautiful. Oh, you'll never get much in those. <laughs> Handles are done nicely. The wood is done nicely. Uh, chrome's looking pretty good on this particular uh, vehicle. Mm, didn't quite shut there. Oh, hello. Houston, we have a problem. Oh, it didn't like that. Oh, that, doesn't that sound nice though, eh? Let's do that again. Uh, <clears throat> solid. Good, solid. Ah, oh, this one's locked. Okay. All right, and he's got the chrome strips to put in here. He, he just hasn't put them in yet. I mean, she's a pretty good looking car. What don't I like about it? It's an automatic. Hey personal choice oh and he's <laughs> I noticed he has one uh, orange turn signal and one red one but this particular gentleman owns a number of Jaguars so I'm sure he'll be uh, getting around to doing the things that need to be done it's got good tires on it the body works pretty straight uh, depends how picky you want to be and what you would pay for it. I, d I don't know what these go for, in all honesty. Um, I would imagine if this was uh, a, few, a few more dollars spent on it, it'd probably go for, I don't know, maybe 30, 45,000, something like that. Uh, they're not as popular as the Mark II Jaguar, but I think they're a lovely vehicle. And I'm a Mark II Jaguar owner. I do own a Mark II Jaguar. Um, but I gotta say that I, I do like the features of the S-Type. I like the fact that it's got the uh, the IRS on it. That is that is good. Um, I like the seats. They're they're much more comfortable. Um, uh, discs all round, of course, but the the rear ones are an absolute nightmare to get to <laughs> because of the IRS. Um, but I like the styling of it. A lot of people don't like the uh, the covered over headlights. Which uh, excuse me a second. I I like this. I I think that looks nice. Um, but some people don't like it. Again, I guess it's each to their own. Um, if I had the money, would I buy one? Yeah, I would. If I had the money, would I buy this one? Yes, I probably would. Knowing that it needs work, but there is no way I'd pay thirty or 45000 for it. Definitely not. Because uh, it, needs, it needs a fair bit of work. And one thing that I mentioned earlier in my video that I will tell the customer is it needs completely new wiring harnesses. It's too dangerous the way it is. Um, but that's his choice, you know, I, I can't make them do anything. So, 
All right, guys, uh, I'm going to cut this one off here now so that I can get it pushed out tonight. And uh, as always, please like, comment, subscribe, ding the bell, and then you'll get notified when I put more crap out there. And if any of you are easily offended, do not watch my videos because I sometimes say fuck and I get annoyed. Oh, and, and mentioning getting annoyed, and I'm always bitching about car designers, as you know, Jack, you are not perfect. Getting these nuts out of here to, to remove this filter was a bloody nightmare. Maybe they could have, you know, curved in the, uh, the inner wing a little bit more there to give us a bit more room. That would have been nice. But apart from that, they've squeezed a very powerful engine into a very small area. But I really do think they could have made the inner wings go more out if you like so that there's more room in the engine bay but uh, that's a minor detail i still love these cars i still love jaguars and uh, as those of you that have looked at me working on vehicles you will notice i even have a jaguar tattoo and i'm sure a lot of you think poor sad bastard yeah well it's my choice not yours ha <laughs> ha all right again do please like comment subscribe now get your ass out there in that garage and do some shit. Good night, all.